Hello folks, Israel Epstein here. Just wanted to give you an update on our aquaponics system. Uh, this is actually week six, so I guess that is correct. I've been misinforming you lately about how many weeks we have here. Um, good thing I marked the videos, but I keep misspeaking. This is actually six weeks worth of growth and four weeks for the fish because this system was set up and running with some plants in it and doing the uh, fishless cycling for about two weeks before we added the fish. So this is six weeks total, four weeks for the fish. And if you'll remember, <clears throat> when we added the fish, they were just little tiny guys. They were fry, essentially. And so uh, here's our fish at week number six, and this is four weeks worth of growth for our fish. Look at those suckers. They're growing huge. They are actually growing very fast. I'll let the water kind of calm down just a little bit before we zoom in on them. But these guys are turning into little pets, man. Whenever they're hungry and it's dinner time, they come running, swirling around the top. So it looks like we've got 82 degree water right now, so that's not too bad. It's been about 103 here in the Southwest Desert. Uh, let's move on to grow bed number one. You can see that we still have this strawberry plant that is clinging to its life. Uh, it's, I don't know, maybe not enough sun. Um, just not doing that great. Our corn is still hanging in there. That was the first little corn kernel that I tried. We do have some, um, it's like some zucchini or something that's growing back there. I'm not sure what that is. I actually just sprinkled some seeds in here like four days ago for some broccoli and that broccoli is coming up pretty darn good. Not a problem at all. Uh, now here is where we experience disaster. You'll notice in tank number two that there's a big plant missing. That is my tomato. My tomato and one of the little green beans that I had up here in the front killed them dead. I actually killed them dead and let me tell you how I did that. Now I had mentioned before that I was using sea kelp or some of you might be using maxi crop or sea sol. This is the stuff that I use and I just usually now just add one cap full to a, a large spray bottle and actually you can see the spray bottle right there. Uh, but that thing is, I usually just put it in the bottle, mix it to one cap full and then just spray it on the foliage. This time I had this stupid idea, I don't know why I did it, I took one cap full and I dumped it into each grow bed. And it didn't seem to do much to this one, but when I came out the very next day, the green bean that was growing right here and my tomatoes were like completely flopped over, like dying. So that is the only thing that I did differently and I'm gonna have to attribute it to that. I wouldn't think that it would have an overdose on plant food, but it apparently did. Those tomatoes just flopped and withered like instantly. The very next day I got up and that thing was dead. So I was bummed that that tomato plant was doing really well. So I will never again be adding uh, this stuff directly to the grow beds. It might have just been a, a flat overdose. It wasn't diluted at all. I just put one cap full. I just dumped one cap full right into where the water was going in and it just killed it. It killed it quick. Uh, it didn't seem to do anything to grow bed number three where the corn was planted. The corn is still doing really well. Uh, we got some lettuce here and some lettuce here and some spinach there. Seems to be doing pretty good. They're growing pretty fast. In grow bed number th uh, four, you can see this one is doing really well. Now this one, when I put in the cap full of that stuff into here, I actually did experience the loss of two plants. Uh, they, one of them was a zucchini and one of them was a squash. Uh, I, that's the only plant loss that I have experienced thus far. It was just putting in a cap full of that stuff right into the grow beds. Didn't seem to like that at all, at least a couple of the plants. But everything else seemed to be thriving and doing well. So this is uh, grow bed number four is doing really well. Everything's kind of blooming here. Uh, we, I expect that we'll see some uh, fruiting of these plants here pretty soon. And then here is grow bed number five. And it is also doing really well. We got uh, growth just hanging down the side there. That's the watermelon and it's, it's doing fabulous. Just growing like crazy. 
Uh, here is our, gro our uh, meter readings on our chemicals for the week. You can see that we have probably between zero trace to maybe 0.25 parts per million of ammonia, which is, that's good, that's not a problem. Uh, we've got trace elements of nitrite, which is good. And we got a lot of plant food, it's bright red. So our readings are all doing really well with our, uh, our chemical readings. It's looking really good. Keeping my water tank here to, to fill her up. Now this system is eating about 10 to 15 gallons of water every probably four days maybe five days I'll have to add like 10 gallons to 15 gallons so that's actually not too bad it was a little more than I thought it would be but I guess when you think about it uh, you are you know watering plants and they're using some of it and of course I'm losing some to um, just evaporation in this intense heat so I imagine that in the winter we probably won't experience quite as much water loss but realistically, I'm watering all these plants on, uh, you know, 10 gallons of water um, per week, essentially, about every week. So that's that's not too bad. That's really not too bad between evaporation and plants using the water. So that's everything seems to be doing really well. And then once a week on Thursdays, I added again. I mentioned. Um, uh, 8.5 capfuls of the API stress zyme. It's keeping that water nice and clean. And those fish are just doing so well. It's really stunning. Everybody who comes over to see them, just they see them every couple of days. They're like, I swear those fish are growing. They're like at a really rapid rate. They eat voraciously. Now, here's something that I have learned, and this is something that you'll want to pay attention to. When I feed these little guys, if I take a, a pinch of this this food and I just put it right here in one spot, the big guys are going to come up and take over, and they do. They're very the bigger guys are very voracious and kind of bully like. But what I have since been doing is kind of flinging it out over the tank a little bit more, and it spreads out, and those big guys can't hog it all. And so I'm thinking I'm getting a little bit better feeding. Uh, for my little guys and they'll probably do a little bit better but these big guys were really hogging the food and boy it really shows because they just started growing like mad you can see that we have bees the bees are really happy to come in here to, especially to this lava rock they seem to really love sucking the water out of the lava rock but everything seems to be doing really really well on week six overall week four for the fish they're doing great experiencing some really nice growth fish are getting huge i expect that in just a couple of more months they're just going to be gargantuan and they get so excited when i come out here in the morning they just are circling around and doing laps for me and showing off they just think it's really exciting to get fed and they'll come right up to the surface kind of like pets <laughs> they're pretty cool I'll show you real quick what else we got going here. The uh, the lettuce that I planted and the, um, see these bigger ones that are really nice and green, those are the lettuce and then the smaller ones are spinach. Seems to be doing really well here in this mulch that we put around the tree. It's looking pretty good. And then um, over here we planted our corn, I think I remember showing you. That stuff's doing really good too. And then uh, let's walk right over here and I will show you some of our other stuff oh, look at that Leroy snuck by me while I was filming and stuck his new Savage 300 wind mag sitting right there cool there's uh, our bean our green beans are doing really good and we got a couple of carrots in there that are kinda hanging in there they don't seem to like this uh, grow spot very much these over here are definitely doing much better they seem to be growing really nice in this soil right here. And of course, our grapevine, our Thompson seedless grapevine, if you remember when I first put it in there, it came up to about here, and it's doing really well. It's expanding itself quite a bit. 
sending out shoots all over the place and our little grapes down there are actually yeah, they're not doing absolutely fabulous but they're plumping up a little bit I will spray this foliage with uh, some of that uh, kelp it really seems to like that and uh, the onions that we planted right here are probably too much shade they're not doing that great so we'll try it again uh, in some more sunshine once this intense heat goes away of course our aloe vera is doing spectacularly so that my friends is pretty much it and uh, stay tuned for next week and we'll give you an update on week seven and you'll probably be surprised at how big those fish are so this is Israel Epstein signing out have a great day Shabbat Shalom